That's about our heads. With our heads bowed and our hearts, I wonder how many would like to be remembered in prayer. Or just lift up your hand and say, Lord, remember me, O Lord. There's a lot of requests here. The handkerchief's laying on the desk. Dear Heavenly Father, we are assembled again this evening under this roof where you have met with us so many times and have expressed your love to us as we try in our humble ways to express our love and greatness to you for what you have done for us. And tonight we come again, Lord, as a needy people, Amen. for we are ever in need of Thee. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And as long as we are here on earth, we know that will be the cry, for we are in a battle. Yes, and we are, uh, the battle is raging, and You promised and said, how the enemy be like a roaring lion. He's loose among the people, and we can see it everywhere. Like a roaring lion devouring what he may because he knows his time is short. But we have, we have a, a father who cares for his little ones. And to thee we flee with our request tonight, Lord. We pray that you'll grant them. And these handkerchiefs laying here, Father, means that there are sick people somewhere in the land and is calling and needing Thee and believing on Thee to exercise their faith here to send these handkerchiefs. God grant that every one of them be healed. We see Your mighty power, Lord. Just a few moments ago there in that room, restore the perfect memory to a boy that it was lost. We see Your great power time after time moving the sickness and revealing the secret of the heart and showing the people and setting them straight in order. We thank you, Lord God, because that's beyond any man, that's Amen. beyond any uh, thing that any of us to know how you can reveal the very the cause and what did it and how it is. That's you, Father. We know that the Word searches out the heart and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So we thank thee for this. Amen. And thou, Lord, we believe that the people now with their heads bowed are thinking on these things, and it's the Holy Spirit that's speaking to them. And grant that each one of their requests may be answered. Save the savable, Lord, tonight. The lost, may they come in and be saved. We're so thankful to see that great, huge pile of wet clothes there, knowing that the grave has been opened and the old man's sin has been buried for many of them. Now thank Thee for it, Father. May they walk in newness of life the rest of their days. Through Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Lord bless you. <clears throat> Grant the request that you had on your heart to be answered. Now, I believe Billy said that Brother Wheeler had a little baby. Was that right? Did I make a mistake there? To be dedicated or something another? Or dedication? If you'd like to bring them up now, we'd be glad if the elders will come forward, lay hands upon the little fellows for dedicational service. And um, we'll try to be just brief, and we want these little fellows that wants to come to the Lord. Jesus wants to bring their, their little jewels that God has given them. We always try to make a way for them because we don't know what tomorrow holds. My mother used to tell me, don't put off tomorrow what can be done today. Right. Of course, you don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. That's the main part. We know who holds tomorrow. Brother Wheeler... The Lord God bless you. And this is uh, Sister Wheeler. Uh, I'm certainly happy to meet you. And uh, my grand privilege, first time, I believe, as I know of, to meet you. And this is your baby. What's his name? Carlene Rebecca. Carlene Rebecca. Well, what a fine little girl. Pretty as she can be. Now, little Carlene Rebecca Wheeler, Brother Wheeler, is one of our deacons here in the church. And God has blessed their union to this little one. I believe you have about, I know two other girls, don't you? Three other girls. And they're really fine ladies, as I understand. And um, so I pray that God will make Rebecca just like the rest of us. See, and then that'll be satisfaction with you all, won't it? That's why I call their very sweet children. I don't know where she let me hold her or not. But if she don't, we'll lay hands upon her. Would you like to come with me, Rebecca? You don't be no more? That's very fine. What a pretty little girl. And let's bow our heads. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, as we stand here before this deacon tonight, 
and truly a fine office he holds. For a deacon must be found blameless, the husband of one wife, controlling his family well. Or if he doesn't know how to control his family, how can he control the house of God? And we thank thee that this brother has met these qualifications and we find in him the Spirit of God. And he brings now his little baby daughter here to be dedicated. You have placed it in their arms for raising. God, and how thankful we are that we could say their desire is that she'll be as the rest of her sisters. Grandfather, that this will be so. And may the child live and, and be a great service to you, Father. And now... In the name of Jesus Christ, we give this baby to you for a life of service. Make her healthy, strong. May she live a long life until Jesus comes, if that's possible. And then, Father, we believe that she'll be raised in the emanation of Christ. And we give her life to you for a life of service. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Rebecca. And God bless you, Brother Wheeler and Sister Wheeler. Lord be with you. How do you do? Now, here's another little girl with a great big smile on her face. And what's her name? Uh, Rhonda Renee Coates. Is that right? Are you in relation to Jesse and them, Jesse Coates? I just want, I know some of the Coates here in town. I know them real well. They've been, been friends of mine for, for a long time. Um, Rhonda? Rhonda Renee. I wonder if you could come over to me, Rhonda. I'll give you right back to mother as soon as we give you to the Lord Jesus. Now, isn't it sweet? Now, let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, as your elder and I stand together tonight in agreement and in harmony in the gospel, this mother brings this little uh, Rhonda Renee to you for dedication. You Amen. have placed it into her arms for care, and the first thing she can do is present it back to you. As Job said of old, the Lord gives these things. And we pray, God, that you'll keep her safely until the hour that you're to take away. Amen. God grant that she'll live a real Christian life and be an example to others as Amen. she comes up. Bless her home and may it be dedicated to you a full service of true hearts. And now, God, we give you little Rhonda Renee Coates in the name of Jesus Christ for our life of service. Amen. Amen. Very sweet. God bless you, sister. How do you do? Uh, Robert Paul Shane. Shame. Shame. Oh, what a few. Fine, young yet. I don't think you could raise much fuss about it. Don't laugh at me like that. Look at here. Don't see something like that. <laughs> Robert Paul. What a beautiful name. Let us bow our heads. God, as this young girl comes here, just to us would be a child. And she's giving her a little boy, <coughs> oh God, as a life of service to you. It's the fruit and the results of their union. I pray, God, as your elder and I lay hands Amen. upon this little fellow, that his life will be dedicated to you. Grant, Lord, if there is a tomorrow, may he pack the message that his, his parents is listening to, you, God. Amen. Grant it. And I pray that you'll bless their homes and may the child be raised in the admonition of God and will be a, a loving disciple of yours. We give him to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, he, he's just one fine boy. That's all. <laughs> Couldn't ask for nothing sweeter. Could There's nothing in the world to be any sweeter than that little fellow. All the smiles. That's sweet. <laughs> That's one time my wife envies my job, holding those babies. She loves to hold them. I do too, but I'm always afraid I'll break them. They're so, you know, so cute and delicate looking, but, you know, they're, they're tougher really than what we'd be. <laughs> now, I told you to go get out. Well, I've only got 35 minutes. I'm going to have to hurry, won't I? Let's see. I, I, I don't mean to, to misjudge anything or say anything wrong, but I'm going to try real hard because, you know, if we get way up the, the road, we're not, to, we're not just as active as we used to be. You know, the mile sometimes gets rough in two or three services a day. Why? And what does the main part is those visions. Preaching doesn't hurt me. Mine, stand here all day long, don't bother me. But, I, but just those visions, and when people are on these interviews, that's what they must have, see? That's what they're here for. It's something you can't be settled just for laying hands on. It's got to know the root, the start of it. 
What causes it? What did it? And then what to do to get out of it? That's what they're here for. Now, the meeting starts day after tomorrow night. Or no, I beg your pardon. It's Wednesday night at Shreveport, Louisiana. And if any of you have friends around in there, why, tell them come on over. Life Tabernacle, I think it's where it's, it starts, unless it gets across the auditorium, if they can get that, which is, gives them a little more seating room. But they got the balcony upstairs and the big main floor and then a the floor down below that. So I don't know exactly how many they can seat, but... It's, um, if it gets too bad, maybe we can get the auditorium just across from it, which will, I don't know how many it seats either. I've had services there, but don't remember. This is a, a annual convention. Um, three years ago, I was down there, and we started a revival in the name of the Lord, and it's never ended since. It's constantly going on. Just constantly, every day. People come in being saved, baptized, and going on with the Lord, like that. ministers and everything coming right in. And we're just, as long as it keeps on like that, and I get to stay here, I want to visit it all the time, and just put in by a few words and, and go ahead. Now, that'll begin Wednesday and end Sunday. A Christian Businessman's Breakfast is, uh, I don't forget the name of that hotel. I believe it's um, called, um, I'll, they, they'll tell you when you get there, it's a Businessman's Breakfast. We had a great time there to you, businessman, here the last time there, the Lord saved a, a rabbi out of the city and oh, I don't know what all taking place. There's a great time in the Lord there. Preaching on the blood covenant. <laughs> uh, so we, that's what the Jews know about. It's the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, you see. Now, let's get right straight to the Word and I'll do my best to keep my Word to you. And um, now, if the Lord willing, uh, Sunday after Christmas, if you're on your holidays and riding around, it's not slick and everything, why, well, you're around here close, so I drop in. And we're aiming to have a service here Sunday morning of, uh, of, uh, of Sunday after Christmas. What is the date? The 29th, the 29th day, and that's the Sunday after Christmas. Uh, 29th day. Now, if anything occurs that we, something we won't, it can't be here, we don't know about the future, you know, but if anything happens, well, you that live out of town, that come in like the folks from down in Memphis, I wanted to hear Brother Unwin saying how great thou art, and I don't, is he here tonight? And uh, so, and I always have so many things, uh, I can't get them all done. <laughs> can't get them all done. God bless uh, you, you people. Now, let us turn in the Scriptures now for just a, a little Scripture reading, where if my words fail, this won't. And then God will bless you for staying just on account of Listening to His Word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the Word of God. Is that right? Now, as I was thinking while you're turning to St. John, the 6th chapter, beginning with the 60th verse and reading the 71st inclusive. St. John 6, 60. Now, I was thinking as I was looking out the window a little while ago and looking at the setting of the sun and seeing how all nature has a law. And when the winter time comes, the law automatically of nature runs the sap down into the tree roots. It buries. And Job said, Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave, that thou would keep me in the secret place until thy wrath be. And now, that's it. If thou would hide me. See, he saw the, the nature, the tree, the life go down into the roots, Brother Wade. And there stay until the wrath be passed. And then call me and set me a time. See? Nature has a law. There is a law of nature. There's no way at all to get around it. It's a law of nature. And then there's a law of the Spirit. There's also no way of getting around that. I was speaking to a couple this afternoon about you cannot totally annihilate anything. Human beings can't annihilate. They can tear down, but not annihilate. Someone said, well, what about taking and burning a piece of paper? Does that annihilate it? No, sir. It only breaks the chemicals apart. The heat of the fire, it goes right back to the gas is what it was in the beginning. You cannot annihilate. And if the world stood long enough, that same gases that, and, and chemicals is in that paper could come right back and be a piece of paper again. So you cannot annihilate. Exactly. God, then, if there is a resurrection to everything, back again in no annihilation, there's a resurrection of the just. <laughs> and we are got to come back. That's all there is to it. There's no way at all of doing it. No matter if you're burned up, if you're drowned, wherever it takes place, it cannot annihilate. 
Just remember that every part of you was here when God spoke the world into existence. He put your body here right then. And there's nothing can take it away except God. It's all back into His hands again. And He's the one, the one that the Creator was the one who made the promise. So we're sure that there is life eternal. And we have the assurance in our heart now that now we have everlasting life, eternal life that cannot die in us now. All right. St. John 6. Let's begin now with the sixth chapter of St. John and beginning with the 60th verse. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard, heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Then Jesus knew himself that his disciples murmured at it. And he said unto them, Does this offend thee? What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before? Is, is it the Spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profiteth nothing? The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit. That's Him. And they are life. Amen. What did he say? I am the truth, the life. They are spirit. They are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore I said unto you that no man can come to me except it were given unto him of my Father. And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Hard saying, see, he couldn't take it. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe that and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. <laughs> Jesus answered him, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Issachar, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now, if I should call this a subject for tonight and try my best to make that half hour count, I want to talk on three kinds of believers. And I've often made the statement, I thought, well, I'll just believe I'll preach on it one time this afternoon. I thought that. The first is believers, make believers, and unbelievers. Now, that is quite a, a subject, but as sure as we sit here tonight, that group is always gathered together. Amen. Wherever the people gather, we find this group and always have found them, and we probably always will have them until the coming of the Lord. And I want us tonight to picture ourselves as I speak of these three groups and see what group that we are in. Now remember, I'm speaking here to maybe uh, this church packed again tonight around in the walls and corners, but I'm also speaking the world around, see, and all different parts of the world. These tapes circulate through ministries of the tapes. Now, I want to speak of the three different types of believers now. Now remember, believers... My subject is believers. One of them is a true believer. And the next is a make-believer. And the next is an unbeliever. See? Now, the first group we'd like to talk about is the believer, because I think he ought to be first. Because he is the one that truly believes. Now, believes like the disciples believed here. We're going to use this uh, Scripture reading for example. Now, the first is believers, genuine believers, 
And faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the Word of God. The Word of God, which is Christ. See? Believers. Now, did you notice this great statement that this believer made? Now, a believer doesn't have to be a smart person in the world's way of being smart. He doesn't have to be an educated person in the way that uh, these people uh, try to, uh, to say that you have to be, but you do not. You, uh, this man that made this statement, the Bible itself said that he was both ignorant and unlearned. Amen. Peter, he was not a uh, really considered an intelligent person. And Isaiah 35 says, There shall be a highway and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. I was talking to one of the deacons this afternoon as we talked about the bridges spanning across this new one. I said there's many expansions across bodies of water and bios today. And I said, but there's one great expansion that reaches from earth to glory. It's called the King's Highway. The unclean shall not pass over it. That's right. It's a, a road that's built by Christ our Lord. The expansion that is made from this earth to another land. Uh, uh, and the unclean doesn't pass over it. Peter, this unlearned person, of uh, standing there when he had saw the thoroughly uh, uh, vindicated word of the day that God promised in that day that there would be a one rise up which would be a, a prophet among them. And Simon was hard to believe it because there had been so many impersonations of it. But when he seen the genuine unfolded word of that age, and here he properly identified, he, he was certainly convinced who he was. And uh, he was the one who said, uh, Lord, to whom would we go? When it was asked him, when the, the crowds were separating between the believers and unbelievers and make-believers, there was all three of them standing right there. And that one company of people, believers, make-believers and unbelievers, right found in this chapter right here. And because that Jesus had spoke the words the way he had, it separated his congregation. But it must be done. He was a great man as long as he healed the sick. But when he come down to the doctrine and the prophecy, that's what separated the, the chaff from the wheat. See? The chaff only wraps around the wheat. It's not up the wheat. It cannot be used. There's nothing in it. No life in it. It's a husk. And it cannot stay with the wheat. It won't be air with the wheat. And so it's got just the grain is what we're talking about. The heart of the grain of the wheat. Now, notice, uh, Peter was convinced that that was the Messiah. Now, it don't make any difference what all the rest of them said. It didn't make any difference what the priest said. It didn't matter to Simon Peter what the church said. He was convinced himself. Jesus told him in one place where he asked, Who does man say I am? And some said, You're a prophet. Some said, you're one of the old prophets raised up, and, and you're Moses or Elias or somebody. He said, I asked you, what do you think? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, Amen. the Son of the living God. He said, Blessed art thou, the son of Jonas, Simon, the son of Jonas, for flesh and blood never revealed this to you. You never learned it from a book or from a creed or from a catechism. You, you, my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. There's a genuine believer. Spiritual revelation of the Word. Amen. And, and up, thou art Simon. And upon this rock of your revelation of who I am, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. See? No wonder Simon said, To whom would we go? Jesus turned and said, Do you wish to go also? And they said, Lord... Who would we, where would we go to? For thou alone has the words of life. You're the only one. For not only did he have the words of life, he was the word of life. See? He was the word of life. And Simon thoroughly recognized this. And when he recognized it, that was what, that kept his hope because it was revealed to him. 
that he was that living word. Now, that's a genuine believer. When the Holy Spirit, not some persuaded by some other person, not by some other thing, but when the Holy Spirit has revealed to you the word itself, and you see the word made plain, vindicated, then the Spirit of God come and get into that age for the word for that age and make it manifested. How could a man kept from believing Luther if he didn't know that? Luther was a reformer. The man's spirit went forth there for reformation. Wesley the same way. They had to believe it. See, that was a, that was a message to the church age. That was exactly what was happening. That's what was to take place. You had to believe it. And here we are down to the Lady Ossian age. And we're taught in the Lady Ossian age that Christ was put out of His church. Amen. And was even knocking on the door trying to get back in. So when we see that happening, we know what age we're living in. And then we're at the closing of the history of the world. The book is now being finished. The last line will be wrote across it someday and she'll be closed up. Amen. And time shall be no more. Amen. And there's a great drama being set. And angels are standing over the skies watching. You know what a drama is? The actors are ready. You can see them acting. You can see the evil one acting. You can see the villain of the play. How he's come on the scene with his cunningness to deceive. But you can also see the raptured church making herself ready. It's a great scene. You can see the presence of God vindicating and making the great drama that's foretold here in this Bible to act itself out. What a time to live. The most glorious time. The man of all ages is long for this time. The prophets of old long to see this hour. But wasn't privileged. Now, there was a believer because he seen it, he believed it, we're fully persuaded that thou art the Christ, the Messiah, the Word of God for this day, and we believe that. That was a real believer. Let's just take up a few more believers right quick before we go to the next character. Let's take uh, the prophet Noah. When he being maybe a farmer, perhaps he was in them days, a farmer. But when the scoffers and religionists of that day, the church had got to a low ebb, and God spoke to Noah and told Noah that he was to build an ark. Noah never debated that with God. He believed it. It was the Word of God and went to work right quick making things ready. That's a real believer. Don't fuss about it. When you're thoroughly convinced, that's it. Just like anyone, any faith anyway, faith cometh by hearing. If you can stand here, no matter what the doctor says is wrong with you, which the man gives you the diagnosis of the cases and probably knows just what he's talking about as far as his instruments and knowledge will permit him to know. But he says there's nothing left but death. But you pray and stand in honor. In the future, you can see a well-mannered woman standing there. <laughs> that's it. Amen. That's Amen. just it. You'll walk right into that just as certain as anything. Because you believe it. Amen. God has spoke it. You know it's so. Amen. Like the little woman coughing up the cancer. See? Oh, no doubt in her mind that's going to happen. Amen. The cancer was dead and it turned loose in the way it went. Amen. See? That's it. You believe it. Like that father brought his little boy a while ago in there and he's sure in a building somewhere now. The little boy had a fall and lost his memory. He couldn't me- remember anything. Just in a few moments after prayer, I asked him his name. He told me how old he was and there he was. Just as normal as anybody could be. See? They believe. And when God says anything, it must be that way. And Noah believed God and Noah was considered a believer. Amen. Daniel, when the church was in captivity... Down in Babylon, Daniel believed God. And no matter how much they said, we make a proclamation, they'll not pray to no other God but this image out there of this uh, holy man or whatever it might be. Daniel didn't pay any attention to that. He had heard God. For he was a prophet and the word came to him. And when the temple was dedicated, it was said, if any man is in trouble in any country, look this way towards the holy place and pray then here from heaven. And Daniel believed God. He was a genuine believer and even the lions couldn't eat him. That's right. See? He was a believer. He had something real and genuine. He was a believer. David, another believer, a little off scow of a boy, 
Daniel didn't take the place with the modern church. Neither did Noah take the place with the modern church. Not at all. They was believers in what God said to be the truth. No matter what the modern world said, they believed what God said was the truth. That's genuine believers, just same as Peter did and the apostles. They believed that he had the word of life and was the word of life. I believe the same thing today. And every other thing against it is contrary. It's not. It's death. This alone is the word of life. And Christ is the word. Now, David, a ruddy fellow. The first place, he was probably picked on by his brothers. Because he's a little fellow. He wasn't big enough to bear an armor. He couldn't go to war. And he was too little and scrawny. And yet, he got out there as a believer. And as he sat back on the desert watching a, a few dozen sheep that his father had given him to watch over with a slingshot in a country where there's lions and bears and wolves and so forth, David began to look upon the shady green pastures and know what it meant to a sheep to get down in that shade and lay down in the heat of the sun. Know what a good cold drink of water meant. As he said, as a heart thirst after water broke, my soul thirst after thee, O God. Okay? He had cried. Prayed, and one day the emergency arose. A lion grabbed one of his sheep and took off. He thought the God that made me superior to the lion. <laughs> See, and he took the slingshot and knocked the lion down with a little rock in the slingshot. Now, if anybody ever seen a lion, one of them African lions, big woolly neck lions that they have there in Palestine and Asia, they'd know what one of them fellows was when a great big three hundred magnum Harley will knock him down, and he knocked him down with a rock. And when the lion rose up after him, he grabbed him by the beard and killed him. That's the reason he knew what he was talking about. He had had an experience. He had put God to the test about his word. And he, he wasn't afraid of Goliath because he was uncircumcised. He wasn't a believer at all. And when Goliath came out and cursed him in the name of his gods, and Goliath Many times uh, larger than he was. Great big fellow, 14 inch fingers on him. Now the fingers would be that long, see? 14 inch fingers. A warrior. And probably the coat of nail that he had on him probably weighed 300 pounds or more, see? That he had on him. A helmet. And a great, probably the metal, an inch and a half thick. A great big giant like that walking with a, with a weaver's needle, which is claimed to be around 20 feet. He had 20 foot spear in his hand. Now, how could anyone, a man like that, could just stand and pick up a dozen men and throw them like that as he come up? What an opposition. And there he was standing there, boasting himself, yeah. bragging. One of the, it seems like the odds is down. You see, he said, let, don't have no bloodshed. He said, let, let some man come fight me, and then if I win, then you ought to serve me. And then if, if, uh, if uh, you win, then we'll serve you. See, when the devil thinks he's got the odds on you, see... That's when he likes to make his brag. But he met the wrong man. He met the littlest man in the country. Amen. Little stoop shouldered ruddy-looking fellow. He said, Do you mean to tell me that you, the, the army of the living God, will stand there and let that uncircumcised Philistine defy the army of the living God? <laughs> Why, he was shocked at it. Why? Why? He was a believer. The others were make-believers. Amen. Amen. See, he was a genuine believer. He said, if you're afraid, I'll go fight him. See, what a challenge for a little guy like that. And so he was a believer, and he'd done just exactly what he knew that God would do. He's, when that uncircumcised Philistine cursed him in the name of his gods, he said, am I a dog? A little bitty run of a kid come out like that. I said, I'll pick you up on the end of my spear and I'll hang you up there in a tree and let the birds pick your flesh. Oh, my. Boy, what a horrible fellow he was. David said, you meet me with a sword and a spear with an armor. You meet me in the name of a Philistine, but I meet you without a sword or spear and armor, but I meet you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. There you are. That's a believer. That's his fortress. That's his shield. That's his defense. Amen. That should be the church's defense. Any believer, that's his defense. No matter what takes place, what the world says, anything else, your defense is the Lord God of Israel. That's it. The name of Jesus Christ is a mighty tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. That's our defense is Jesus Christ. Notice, and when it comes to pass, we know what happened. David, 
Nowhere to hit but that one little place when he dropped down his, his, uh, his cover over his face. One place to hit was right here in his forehead. And before he could get with any distance to the, the giant, God directed the killing mark and he slew the giant. See? God did it. Now we notice he was a believer. Now another believer was Abraham. And he was of the a Chaldean of the city of Ur. And he was called upon to do something that was, and believe something that was totally, physically impossible. But he didn't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, says Romans 4. But was strong giving praise to God. When Abraham was 75 years old, and his wife 65 years old, and had been living together since they were young boys, this is his half-sister, a young boy and a young girl. And that was, they'd lived together without any children at all. And God told Abraham, separate yourself from the unbelievers. God always calls from separation. Amen. Separate yourself from the unbelievers and walk with me and I have made you a father of many nations. I've already done it. And Abraham believed it. That's a believer. How are you going to do it, Lord? He never asked the question. God said he'd do it and that settled it. When the first month passed and Sarah was still, she was past menopause. Anything different? Not a thing, but Abraham still believed it. Twenty-five years later, there was still no difference. But Abraham still believed it. Amen. That's a believer. Amen. That's not a make-believer. Amen. That's a believer. Amen. Twenty-five years later, Abraham was stronger than he was at the first place. Amen. He believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness because he be that's a genuine believer. Now, after a while, I'm going to let you search and see what class you're in. Now, what did Abraham do? Stagger not at the promise of God. The impossibilities. What would a man 75 years old with a 65-year-old wife do if they went to a doctor and said, we want to make arrangements at the hospital, we're going to have a baby? And then 25 years later said, Doc, you still own a hospital open. <laughs> See? It makes you act funny. Your decisions are odd to the world. But it's a believer. No matter how strange it seems, the Bible said that he is fully persuaded that God was able to perform what he said he'd do. Amen. That ought to be in the achievement of every believer this afternoon. God's able to keep every word that He said He do. I don't care what the denomination says. The words, the days of miracles is past and all this is telepathy and all this fortune telling. And so, it doesn't matter to me what they say. I still believe that Amen. that gun is zeroed to the target. It'll hit the target. Amen. And I believe if a believer is zeroed with the Word of God, it'll hit the same thing that the Amen. Word of God ever promised hit. Amen. It'll do it again. Amen. I'm fully persuaded of that. That when we see we're in this age when it's supposed to be here. It's supposed to be here. These things are supposed to take place. That's the reason I do believe that when that bride is called out and elected and set in the book of life, there will come a sound from heaven that will take such a baptism of the Holy Spirit into that bride that will take her from the earth and rapture and grace. I promise you. I don't care how many science and how, how many astronauts they signed up and everything else and how many million miles they can see. I don't care nothing about that. There is a heaven. And there's a literal Jesus Christ there that will come in a body form to receive it. Oh, no matter how old the story seems, it's still the truth. God said so. That's, that's what believers believe. God said, I'm the Lord. He is all thy diseases. I am God and I change not. Amen. Amen. And God is Word. And if God don't change, how is the Word going to change? I am God and I change not. The Scripture says that. God said it Himself. And if He cannot change, then He is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The unchangeable Word. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Yes, sir. God raised up bodies all down through Moses and Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Isaiah and Elijah all down where His Word temporarily come. But the full Word was made manifest in this man, Jesus Christ, which He was God in the, God in the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. There He was made flesh. I believe that every word. Amen. Amen. 
Job, another believer. Sometimes believers put to the test. Not sometimes, every time. For every son that cometh to God must be chastened, yes, sir. tried, yes, sir. child trained. Yes, sir. Remember the trials, the dusty roads, the hot sun of persecution. But the loyalty of your heart beats that material till she's ready to go into the mold. Amen. God's children is made up correctly on His Word. Amen. For they are living examples and the Word of God living through them. Amen. See, the trial comes to shake you, to put you to the very bottom to see where you'll stand. Amen. See, tested, tried every son that cometh to God. Amen. Job went through the trials and the tests. His children taken, everything else taken. The church members come, accuse him of being a secret sinner and try to say everything against him, but yet he wouldn't listen to any of it. He knew he had met God's requirements. He knew there's no need of Satan trying to tempt him. He knew it was the devil. And as long as Satan could make him believe that his sickness was his God doing it, he had Job whipped. But when Job once struck that revelation that it was not God, Amen. He was only going through his trials to make him something. Amen. It wasn't God doing it, it was Satan doing it. Amen. And same thing today, he'll try to tell you these trials and things is your Amen. God trying to put punishment upon you. It isn't so. Amen. No, sir. It's Satan doing it and God permitting it to temper you. Yes. To make you see if you're, you're tied to this earth by the earth cares or whether your treasure's in heaven for wherever your treasure is, there you are also. That's right. Your heart is where your treasures are. Job tried, and yet he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. At the last days he'll stand up on the earth, though after my skin worms destroys my body. Did you notice? The skin worms is already in him. Your skin worms is in you. You're in a sealed up casket without any air in there anyhow. But the skin worms are already there. They're right in you. And they're ready to be called to duty any time. Remember Caesar? He cankered right in the street. The skin worms eat him up. Right in the street. His own skin worms. They're right there ready. Though after my skin worms destroys this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Amen. Amen. You cannot annihilate it. All oh, the skin worms eat it up. It still will come back well, again. Yes, sir. Amen. Whom I shall see for myself, mine eyes shall behold and not another. Amen. He said it. Job, why? He was a believer. In trials, he was a believer. Persecution, he was a believer. He was a genuine believer. Joseph, another believer. He couldn't help being what he was. He was a prophet. God made him a prophet. He didn't want to be different from his brothers. But he was different. God made him what he is. Nobody else could take his place. Nobody can take your place. No matter how little you say, Mr. Housewife, nobody can take your place. God in his great economy has so set your, the body of Christ in order till this no one can take your place. How I would like to take Billy Graham's place, any of us ministers, but we can't do it. But just remember, Billy can't take our place. See? We all have a place. Some of us are evangelists, some prophets, some teachers, some pastors, whatever we are, some housewives, some mechanics, some farmers, whatever it is, God has set you in your place. See? Joseph was a prophet. He couldn't help because he could interpret dreams. He couldn't help because that he saw visions. Watch how true he was. No matter if it cost him his fellowship with his brothers, he was true because he believed those dreams. He believed that the dream that he had, that they'd all bow to him, the sheaves would, it come to pass because he believed it. He was a genuine believer. How I got five minutes and ten pages. Notice. No, notice a scripture wrote out here. The woman, Nathaniel, he was a believer. Is that right? Nathaniel, when he saw... What took place and it worked on him that Jesus told him who he was and said he was a, a, an Israelite indeed and there was no guile in him and told him where he was the day before praying under a tree. He saw him and when Philip called him, he was a believer. There's many stand there said this is the devil's spirit. The devil does divine healing. That old devil hasn't died yet today. They believe that the devil does divine healing. Jesus said if Satan can cast out Satan, then his kingdom's divided. And a kingdom can't stand. Amen. Satan said, uh, he can't do it. So Satan cannot cast out Satan. So 
Nathaniel was a believer, and when he seen the Word made flesh, vindicated that he was a believer, he said, Thou art a rabbi, thou art the Christ, thou art the King of Israel. He believed it. When the woman at the well saw it, she believed it. She is a believer. When blind Bartimaeus, when a woman come by, and everybody's crying, going on, some of them saying there's a whole, I hear you raise the dead, there's a graveyard full of them up here. Come up and raise them. Let us see you do it. See, that same devil that said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be turned to bread. Same one put a rag around his face, hit him on the head, said, Pass the stick one of the other. So now, if you tell us who hit you, we'll believe you. Them soldiers. See? Making fun out of him. It looked like the card chip was down on him. But just remember, God's always on the scene. Amen. He's right there ready at any time. Right. Now Jesus said, I could speak to my Father straightway. He'd send me twelve legions of angels. Right. Oh, what would one angel do? Amen. But you see, but he just sent twelve legions just at his command. But he had a job to do. He had something to do. He had to go through that. You've got something to do. God's got something for you to do. You may have some heartaches and some troubles. You may have some disappointments. But uh, do we pray to shun them? No, Lord, take me through them, whatever it is. Whatever it is, don't let me escape them. If they're set for me, just give me grace to go through them. That's all. Now, I noticed, blind Bartimaeus, he knew that they was told, this is that prophet of Jack Galilee. He's the son of David. We believe it. Some of the believers must have told him that. We believers know that he is the, uh, that son of David. And he knew if he was, he was the Word. If he knew he was the Word... He knew he could discern the thoughts of the heart. So he cried, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. The unbelievers just hollering this and that, the church members. That didn't stop blind Barnabas at all. He said, Oh, uh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Perhaps he couldn't hear him. But he knew he was crying and he stopped and turned around. There was a believer. He said, Thy faith has saved thee. Amen. He said that to the woman with the blood issue, the same thing. Thy faith, because she said within her heart, if I can touch his garment, I'll be made well. Thy faith has saved thee. See, she was a believer. That's the same thing as saved William Dow sitting there the other day with a complete heart failure and a heart attack, a man 91 years old. Thy faith has saved thee. Why is a believer? Reverend Tom Kidd here, you're going into his nearly, I guess, waiting around 90 years now. Oh, close to it. And when he was uh, 79 years old, they took him to the hospital with a cancer on the prostrate. The doctor says he hasn't got a chance. But when we walked in that morning, seen that little patriarch with a shawl over his shoulder sitting there, beating a little cane, is almost beside himself, he said to an old woman sitting there, he called her grandmother. Noted her, one of his members for years, said, you look as white as snow. Beyond his mental thinking... Yet when the power of God has struck the room, he's alive tonight. That's been four years ago, a man nearly 80 years old. And here he sits tonight, perfectly sound and well from the cancer. Not a make-believer, a believer. That's it. Believe he takes God at his word, just the same as blind Barnabas was. Blind, but yet he knew if he could attract the attention of Jesus Christ, he'd get what he wanted. The woman noticed she could touch his garment. She'd get what he wanted. She'd get what she wanted. Tom knew. He had faith. If I pray for him, he'd get what he wanted. And that's the same faith that Martha said, Even now, Lord, whatever you ask God, God will do it for you. My brother's laying out a dead four days in the grave, but you just ask God and God will do it for you. He said, Thy brother shall rise again. And she said, Yes, Lord. In the last days at the resurrection, he'll rise. He's a good boy. He said, But I am that resurrection in life. Amen. Yes, Lord, I believe that too. <laughs> Where are you buried him? <laughs> That's it, it's over. Yes, sir. The Queen of the South come up in that generation of unbelievers. That's right, and stood there and believed what she saw to be of God. The Bible said she raised up in the last day with that generation and condemned it because she came from the utmost parts of the world to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Moses was a believer, though he tried intellectually. He tried every scheme he could, but it wouldn't work. He tried to take Israel out, knowing he was called to do it. He tried the mathematical way. He tried the military way. He tried the educational way. He tried every way, but it wouldn't work. But then he took God's way. What happened? There's a fire on a bush up there one day that wouldn't leave. 
Round there, the Word spoke to him and said, I am. Not I was or I will be. I am. And he is still the I am. He is the Word, the eternal, everlasting Word. Moses did not doubt the difficulties against him, every nature against him, everything against him, but the crooked stick in his hand, he went down and tucked over the whole nation, drowned it in the Dead Sea out there, and tucked Israel to the Promised Land. Amen. Why? He believed God. Amen. He had a... That's the believer. We could stay... I've stayed my half hour on the believers. Got two more classes. We'll hurry through them because they're not important anyhow. Amen. No. Amen. Then secondly, there comes now the unbeliever. Let's speak of the unbeliever next. What does the unbeliever do? We see the believer, what? Accepts the Word. Every race, every generation, from all the way from Noah all the way up. We could take six months of revival right on that right there, bringing up the characters. They believe. The believer don't question. The believer believes it regardless of what it sounds like or what anybody else has got to say about it. How impossible it seems to be, the believer believes it. Believes what? The Word. Not the creed, the Word. Not the denomination, the Word. Not what somebody else says, what the Word says. I remember, that is the believer. The believer doesn't question. The believer doesn't say, how can it be if I can get it explained? That's the unbeliever. It's a believer that no matter what it is, if it's the Word, it's the Word. That's true. That's the believer. Now the unbeliever. Now we see, what. Uh, we take the unbelievers. We find out that they did all right as long as they get patted on the back and called disciples. As long as they, everything went fine, they were all right. But when this prophet, that they believed to be a prophet and no was, that could heal the sick and so forth, what did he do? When the real truth and the rebuke came, contrary to what they believed, they couldn't take the Word. That's right. Amen. They could take the miracles, and they performed them. They went out and cast out devils, right. preached the Word, and still unbelievers. Matthew 10, he sent them out, two by two, the 70, and they cast out devils, insomuch that Jesus rejoiced and said, I've seen Satan falling uh, like light from heaven. See? They cast out devils, Judas right with them. Here comes the unbelievers. But as soon as Jesus began to say that he was something, that he was the resurrection, he was the life, what would you say if you've seen the Son of Man ascend up from where he come from? Now this man trying to say he come from heaven. That's too much for us. We can't believe it. He said, what is it? The flesh that you're talking about profit nothing. It's the Spirit that quickens. There you are. The Spirit quickens the Word. It's the Spirit, not the creed. The Spirit of the Holy Ghost quickens the Word to you. It becomes alive. And there you are. You see it. By faith you see it. You know it's so because the Word said so. And the Spirit quickens the Word to you. There you are. Now he said, what we, and as soon as we did this, we find out the unbelievers, when you say something that they don't agree with, they walk out on you. Yeah. Right. I just want... Oh, that's getting so dense in the world today. Start and you say something, they gather in. I notice at meetings, they'll gather in great crowds. And you stand up, start saying something. Now as long as you'll sit there just watching. Just waiting. And as soon as you say... Now, Jesus Christ identified Himself as Messiah because that He was a prophet. That jug's done full. Away it goes. Somebody, and away they go. What is it? Unbelievers. Now, you say you're making that up. I'm not. I'm saying just exactly what the Bible says here. They were unbelievers and they walked out, though they were disciples. But it, it was contrary to what they... He said, this, who could believe a thing like that? See? There's Pharisees and Sadducees that it come out, John went in with him. Because, see, when the, when the supernatural is displayed, it produces three different types. It did down in Egypt. It produced the unbeliever, the believer, and make-believer. It did all three classes. This row down here till we just go on and on through the night. Explain it how it is. Everywhere you find, you see them three. Always that way. See, you find them. Now watch, these 70, they walked out because they didn't agree with what they believed to be right. We haven't got no thought coming. It's what he said. You deny your own thinking. You just say what he says. That's really confession. Confession means to say the same thing. If I confess that a certain thing taking place, I say the same thing that taking place. That's what real confession is. And he's the high priest of our confession. 
see, saying the same thing God said. See, that makes it right, because you're just repeating God's word. Now notice, the 70 walked out. What did they do? And they, they went out just because they, if they disagreed, their, their, their wisdom, their, their church affiliation... It was, was too much. That was too much for them to think that this man standing here, that the, all the rest of people believe that that was illegitimate born. He had no rights to call himself God. And uh, he was just a man. said, we don't stone you for a good work you do, but we, we stone you because you being a man make yourself God. And the Word said he was God. His name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. The very scriptures that they read. The very day that they were singing the psalm, the 22nd psalm, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? All my bones, they stare at me. Not one bone shall be broken. The very song that they were repeating in the temple, they hung the sacrifice, screaming the very words that David said 800 years before, and was too blind to see it. And today, the very God that spoke of this age is on the scene doing exactly what he said he would do, and they're too blind to see it. That's unbelievers. They walk out and say, oh, I can't believe stuff like that. I never heard of that in my life. Yeah. Don't make haters watch you here. The Bible said it would be here. Yeah. It says, Lord, they never heard of that either. But it was there just the same. Yeah. They, yeah. That's right. They were unbelievers, just like Eve was. She was very religious, of course, so. But she, she did not believe the true word, and she had to make herself a religion. So she made some fig leaves, see. But it wouldn't work. Religion means a covering. Cain did the same thing. Cain couldn't believe that that was right. He said, God is holy, God is pure, and God is beautiful. So I will get me some flowers, and I'll take uh, the, the flowers, and I'll make a fine, great altar, and I'll, I'll show my reverence to Him. I'll get up before it, and I'll bow down uh, before Him and worship that God. And I'll put flowers on the altar because, you know, my father and mother eat uh, some apples, some fruit, in the Garden of Eden, and that's the thing that brought me out. And so that's, I will go back because I'll make it beautiful. God just can't turn my big cathedral down. Well, I'll be too big a cathedral. I'll make it so pretty so it'll attract God's attention. <laughs> Satan's the one that dwells in beauty. Amen. That's exactly what the Scripture says. That's, right. that's the reason sometimes a pretty woman is a bait for Satan. If he can just get a hold of her, right. he can twist more men into hell than he could with all the bar rooms in the country. Amen. That's right. Hmm? Or handsome, some great handsome man that wouldn't stand up in his trueness of manhood. See, again, he can swing them women to the devil and just send them to hell. Yes, sir. Notice, Satan dwells in beauty. What did he try to do in the beginning? Make a more beautiful kingdom than Michael's was. Moved over in the north and took two-thirds of the angels with him. See whose, whose son that was and had that nature in him? Satan's son. Certainly it was. Now he built the altar. And he knelt down and he worshipped. He went through everything that Abel did. But Abel knew that it wasn't that. He, it was blood that took him out. He knew that that was it. It was the sex blood. So he took a little animal and offered it up on a rock and chopped his neck. Notice, Cain, he, God told him, he said, why don't you worship like your brother? And you'll do all right. You'll do well if you'll do that. But no, he knew too much about it. Amen. See, he rejected the original of vindicated word. If that ain't his children today. See? Now, look. God had testified. The Bible said, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, or the eleventh chapter. God testifying of his gift that he was righteous. God vindicated his offering. God made proof that that was what he accepted. That was his word. His plan. And told Cain, said, do the same thing. And live. But do you think he'd, he would forfeit his idea? No, sir. He was an unbeliever. And he walked right out. That's right. Cain did the same thing. Nimrod did the same thing. Unbelievers. He did not believe. Balthasar, the same thing. Though or Nebuchadnezzar, though having a Daniel as his God, called him Balthasar, which was the name of his God, saw Daniel do the great works of God. And then he knew that Balthasar believed, or that uh, Daniel was a god. So he made an image to him and put it up out there and made everybody to worship it and so forth. See, the Gentile kingdom come in with forcing of the worship of an image of a holy man. And the Gentile kingdom goes out 
with the forcing of the image of a holy man. Amen. Right. Same way. And there was a handwriting on the wall of unknown tongues at the beginning of the Gentile kingdom that no one could read but that prophet. And there's a handwriting on the wall today. That's right, Ichabod, that the glory of God has departed from them things. And the handwriting's on the wall and it can be read by the spiritual mind. That believes in spiritual things. It's been born of the Spirit of God. Old Balthasar goes out and gets these uh, uh, vessels of the Lord to drink wine. Of. Why? He was an unbeliever. He thought he was a believer, but he was an unbeliever. See, that's it. He disbelieved the Word. Ahab, he was an unbeliever. Though he, he, well, he acted like he wasn't. No, no, he was amongst the believers. But he was an unbeliever. What did he do? He married an idolatrous and brought it, idolatry right into Israel. He was an unbeliever. We know that. They deny the whole of the Word of God to be true. The unbeliever is, you know, remember, he's a hypocrite, and he, he acts like that he says he believes it. That's right. But he denies it. That's right. He said, well, so much of it is well. But if all of it isn't right, then that makes him an unbeliever. Right. You've got to believe every tittle and every jot and everything Amen. that's said in there. Uh, it's got to be true. Hallelujah. If it isn't true, if you say, now, I don't believe that, well, then you're an unbeliever. Amen. As a guy said to me one time, a minister, said, I don't care, Mr. Branham, how many people you could produce that, that you said was healed, I wouldn't believe it. I said, certainly not. You can't believe it. You're an unbeliever. It wasn't for you. It's only for the believers. You've got to believe it. See, and they do not believe it. So when you see a person that, well did Paul speak of the prophet saying that to be heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having forms of godliness but denying the power there, the power of the word from such turn away. Notice, they deny the whole of the word, but in every form very religious. They are unbelievers in the true word. Though it be vindicated all through every age, God vindicated the word of these people I've talked about, Noah, and on down to Moses and all the prophets and forth. God spoke to the supernatural and vindicated the Word and yet those people walked right out on it. And here's these disciples standing there, them 70 and watching Jesus do the things that He did and know the Scripture and Him telling them that that was the age that this was to take place. And then when He said something, the Son of Man, what would you say? When He began to tell them about breaking the bread and so forth and when He had to tell them about great spiritual things and they said, oh, this is a hard saying. He said, what are you going to say then if the Son of Man, you see Him ascend up into heaven where He come from? He said, is it the flesh or is it the Spirit that quickens? See? And then they moved away. So, oh, that, you know, I can't believe that. See? They walk right out on the Word. They won't even stay to see what takes place. That is the, that is the unbeliever. They, what do they do then? We find out that, they, that uh, these people, these uh, believers, so-called believers... But in forms of religion, and they fail to see the identified truth of the Word of God because it's against what they believe. Yeah. See, it don't make any difference what you believe, how loyal you are, how religious you are, or that doesn't have one thing to do to it. Amen. Sincerity, well, they don't have nothing to do with it. I've seen people so sincere, I've seen the heathens burn their children, feed them to the crocodiles. Mothers with their babies, that's more than a Christian to do. Okay? Sincerely. They believe. Sincerely, but they're sincerely wrong. People say, well, this church is... Uh, you're sincerely wrong if it's contrary to the Word. Amen. Well, now look, I don't believe in such things. Well, the Bible said it was so old. Okay? I don't believe that we have to do this. I don't care what you think you don't have to do. God said it must be done. These signs shall follow them. Amen. How far to all the world? Who to every creature? Amen. Amen. It shall be. Glory. Now it shall be. It's going to be. Yes, and this message of the hour that we're now enjoying the presence of God, the latter day, the evening time, when the lights are shining and the things has been opened up and the Word vindicated and proved to be the truth, both prophesied, comes to pass, all through scientific and everything proved, that it is Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever, and a man walk out on that... He's, he's an unbeliever. He's beyond hopes. He's numb by the power of Satan. So there's no hopes for him. He's beyond hopes. Now, 
That is what? The believer? Now, the unbeliever? Now, the third class we're speaking about is the make-believer. That's the why. The make-believer. I remember in there stood all three. Now we find out they do just exactly like their father does, Judas. There was Peter and the rest of the apostles, believers. There was the 70 unbelievers. And there was Judas hung right on. He was a make-believer. What do they do? This is the kind that uh, holds on until they can find something, a fault in it. They're looking every time to find a loophole. See how it's done. See if it's a trick. If it's a gimmick. They're waiting to be sold out. They're looking for that. The unbeliever, he don't even wait around. He's condemned and walked out. The believer, no matter what happens, he believes it anyhow for it's a word. There's your three classes. The old unbeliever will walk out on the first thing that said he don't like about it. Brother, he's going to show his colors right then. He's an unbeliever. Paul said they went out from us because they wasn't of us in the beginning. They started with us. Oh, you did run well. What hindered you? They they went out because it wasn't of us. When they see the Word perfectly moving on, while they want to get some kind of a gimmick, they could work. But the real believers don't question nothing. It's written in the Word and they believe it and it's going on. That's it. Always it's written. If it isn't written, well, you just stay away from it no matter what happens. It's got to be written. See, and they see that written word and they believe it. And they see God moving in His word, see the hour, the message, the time, and they walk with it. As I said this morning, how old Pilate must have walked the floor at night with his worried conscience trying to clean himself. And he said, my, no doubt he called through the night and said, I, I, I've, I've washed my hands all night. And I still can't understand. See, they're not clean. I can never go to meet him. I've got blood up on my hands all my see? Never be guilty of that. See, it's on your hands. There's only one way you can get it out. That's accepted. Amen. That's right. Become part of it. That's, right. That's what it was shed for. Now, the make-believer hangs around and acts just as pious as he can, but down in his heart, he's trying to find what's, what you, how you do it. Oh, if the country isn't full of that part of hypocrites. That's a Judas. That's exactly. Hangs around, becomes part of the group. He was a treasure. See? He stands around. He's always got his hand out for money. You can tell that one thing. He's always fishing for money. And got his hand out for this. And he is a make-believer. He acts like a believer, but down in his heart, you remember, he wasn't fooling Jesus. After the 70 left, and the believers made their stand. And he turned around to the believers. He said, there's still something in you. Or said, I've chose twelve and one of you's the devil. Jesus knowed from the beginning where he was the Word. He knew the secret of the heart. How hard it was! Stop a minute. Think deep, long, straight. How hard it must have been on him. Walking right there and a man called him brother and knowed all the time that that was the deceiver that was going to try to upset him and sell him for thirty pieces of silver. How hard it was to hold it in his bosom. And his friend walking along there, even he said, Friend, call Judas his friend. Have not I been with you all this time? Knowing in his heart and couldn't say it. He knew from the beginning who it was that would betray him. There's that make believer that's just waiting. You'll sing I said, Oh, I believe this, and I believe this, and I believe this. But oh, you know, I heard somebody say so and so times just longing with ears. A real believer don't hear nothing but the Word. Amen. That's all. He watches the Word. He ain't looking for no loopholes. He ain't looking for no gimmicks. He believes God and that settles it. And he just keeps going on. See? There's the believer. The unbeliever fills up in a minute and he can't stay to listen ten minutes to the message. He's got to get up and walk out. It's against his creed and he just won't have no more to do with it. So he goes out. Then the make-believer hangs right on that Judas. See? That's a deceiver. That's a, that's a rascal if I have to say such a word. Judas, he hangs around. This is the time some kind of these make-believers are very popular with the people. That's right. These make-believers. See? Some of them are mighty men, educated, doctor's degree, big pay, everything. Some of them are great men, shrewd, just like sons of Satan would be. Look how Satan come right up there and agree with every bit of that word. 
He's just waiting to find that weak spot in Eve to where he could show his power to deceive her. To betray her. That was, that was Satan. And here Satan is in the form of Judas in that age. That was Satan in the first age. What was he? Agreeing with the Word. So just one little thing. He's trying to find a place where he get a weakness. And that's exactly what the Judas finds right now. He'll come right along with the meeting and watch right around until he can find that little spot that he... Oh, there it is. That's it. Oh, that's the way it's done. That's just exactly. Many of you remember up there that night when that man come out on a platform, he thought that there was a mental telepathy of reading the prayer cards. And how he thought he had it right then. Brother, he, he was sure he had it. And he come around, he belonged to a church that don't believe in, 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 these, in the gospel, the full gospel. And he come up on the platform. I was tired. He's fixing to take me away. That was at Windsor, Ontario. And there, come right across from, from uh, the United States there, right across from Detroit, at Windsor, the big auditorium. This man come up there, the gray suit on, a red tie, intelligent looking man, smart as a tack. He comes to the platform, and I, he walked up, and I said, well, just let me have your hand. I said, I'm tired. I've seen so many visions. Just let me have your hand. And, and I never noticed the man. And he put his hand over on mine. And I said, sir, there's nothing wrong with you. Go ahead. He said, oh, there he is, too. And I said, well, let me see. I said, no, sir. There's not one sign. No, sir, you're a healthy man. He said, go look at my prayer card. I said, I don't care what you put on your prayer card. I said, I don't have nothing to do with the prayer card. Not thinking. You see, I was tired, wore out. My, but the grace of God, you see, was still there. You remember, if he sends you, it's his obligation to take care of you. It ain't mine. It's him. He sent it. I'm just supposed to stand on what's true. When Moses stole his stick down, it turned into a serpent, and the magician's done the same thing, what can Moses do but stand there and wait for the grace of God? That's all. Same thing. He followed out the commandments, and you know what happened, don't you? This man said, well, he said, there is, look at my prayer card. I said, well, you might have had a lot of faith, and might have done it. I'm not thinking, you see. I've done, not even paying attention. Then he unbuttons his coat and pushed out his chest. He said, there you are. To the office, and I thought, what's going on here? He looked around, he said, uh, There you are. He said, See the gimmick? That's your Judas, a religious man, a preacher of a great denomination. He said, There you are. I had so much faith. Now, he's got so weak he can't read the telepathy. See, it don't come to him no more. And there, he says, Not my faith was so great. He said, I put that on the prayer card, and now he can't catch it, you see. He said, That's the gimmick. I thought, What's going on? Then the grace of God came down. Amen. Glory. I said, sir, why has a devil put in your heart to try to deceive God? A modern Judas. I said, you are a church of Christ. Excuse me. Those are done said it. Amen. You're a church of Christ preacher. You belong to the church of Christ from over in the United States. And that man sitting up there with that blue suit on and your wife and his wife sitting there. You sat at a table last night that had a green thing over it, uh, a spread like this, and you made up that this was telepathy. And you were coming tonight and that man raised up. He said, that's the honest truth. God have mercy on me. I said, sir, you put TB and cancer on that card and now you have it. It's yours now. He grabbed me by the pants leg. He said, I, didn't. I said, I can't help you. Go right ahead. That's up between you and God. You wrote your doom right on your card. And that got him. That was all of it. See? Make-believers. Deceivers. Trying to find some fault with God and His Word. That's the Judases. That's the ones. You see how Judas come out? See how that guy come out? That's the way to make believers happen. See? Make believers. Oh, highly educated. Sometimes a great showdown comes between the Word and their creed. And when it does, they sell out to their denomination just exactly like their forerunner did Judas. Judas sold out to his denomination, sold Jesus, the Word, to his denomination and betrayed Jesus Christ. After he claimed to be a part of it. Ministers sometimes claiming to be servants of Christ. And when the word is thoroughly identified to be vindicated for that day that it is the message of the hour. And they'll sell out their, their popularity to their denomination. Just exactly like Judas did. Betrayed Jesus to the Pharisees and Sadducees. 
that spirit don't die. So there, that's amongst the believers, make believers and unbelievers. See, that's just exact. Come right down and sold Jesus for thirty pieces of silver, and many man will do it today for a meal ticket for an extra hundred dollars a week. Hallelujah. Right. Deny the God that's standing in the midst of them and bought their life. And with the full word in there, say, all oh, them days of miracles is past. God don't need such a thing as that today. See? Oh, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hail Mary, Mother of God. Blessed art thou amongst women. All these other things they say. And some of them said, I believe in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in the Holy Roman Catholic Church and all these things. Tell me one apostle ever had a creed like that. Amen. If the apostles had one creed, it's wrote in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If there's any creed to them, that was it. They had no creed, it was a word. That is true. It still remains the same. That's a prescription for the cure of the disease of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Amen. See? Yes. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But they sell out like Judas. That's the make-believer. Yes, right. Some of them are highly talented people. And this make-believer, watch that guy. Amen. That's the shrewd guy. This little guy fills up quick and jumps up and runs out at every little phrase that he don't like. You don't pay attention to him. He's just an unbeliever to begin with. But when you see this guy, a make-believer, hangs on. See, that's the Judas. That's him. Like great talents... I'm going to call names here, which I really shouldn't do it, but I'm going to call them anyhow, so that you'll know it. Like Elvis Presley, Red Foley, Ernie Ford, Pat Boone, Elvis Presley, a Pentecostal, Pat Boone, a Church of Christ, Red Foley, a deacon in the Church of Christ. Now, I think Ernest Ford is a Methodist. And all those people of those talents, smart, out on television and people say, well, aren't they religious? They sing songs. That don't mean one Amen. thing. Amen. Yes, Deceiving the world. What did they get out of it? Judas got 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. Elvis, a fleet of Cadillacs and a hundred or two or hundred and fifty million dollars or a million dollars on records and things like that. Pat Boone and the rest of them. I don't care what church they belong to and everything. It's hypocrisy. Amen. It's a make-believe. It's a front that their life proves out that isn't right. That's right. right. Then there are those with the talents that it's great organizers, worldly wisdom. They preach the gospel, claim to. Smart man, intellectuals. Listen, a man that's trained in that field, he is not a preacher, he's a lecturer. That's what's the trouble today. We have lectures. Jesus never said, go and train to do this. He said, go preach the gospel. And these signs shall follow the preaching. Amen. Amen. That's not to learn to make a lecture who can stand and just my, put them flowery things in it, make you feel like you're sitting right in the presence of an archangel. That isn't it. Having farms of God in this thing. That's a lecture, not the Holy Spirit in action. Some little fellow with noise ABCs might come down with the power of faith with the Word and make the Holy Spirit do things that man knows nothing about and deny it. See? There you are. Great people. Yes, sir. Then there are organizers. They're prosperous, successful, smart, and worldly wisdom, just exactly like Satan did to Eve. Yeah. That little helpless woman. He came right to her and tried to sell her on the idea that she'd be wiser than what she was, and that's what she's looking for. Yeah. Instead of staying right what the Word said, he wanted to sell her on the idea she'd be wiser, and she bought his product. And they still do the same thing today. The wisdom of this world is foolish to God. Yes, sir. Oh, sir, oh, my. Just the same thing that the Pharisees sold out and did. See, with the wisdom that they know but. But deny the whole Word of God when it's properly uh, been proven and it's been vindicated to them. They still try to find something and think it's a gimmick. They're not settled in their mind. They can't believe it. You can tell them anything and they're back again. You tell them anything, they're back again. And they just, they can't get it soaked in, you see. And watch them. They're watching for a time, just a loophole. That's all they want. That's what, if it hadn't been for the grace of God, all my loopholes had been exposed if I had any. See? It's a grace of God because there's no loopholes in the Word of God. It's straight gospel. I've always said to anybody, if you see me teach or do anything that's not exactly with the Word of God, you come tell me. Here's the thing that covers the loopholes that you're trying to find. Just put your eyes on that and you'll see no loopholes because there's no loopholes. Now remember, Judas thought he found one. That fellow thought he found one. 
Many times they think they find it, but it proves out that it's not. That's some uh, make believers, right. hypocrites. There are ninety five percent on the word, so is Eve. But ninety nine and nine tenths, but it's that one tenth that caused all death and sorrow. That's the one thing that condemns the organization and things because they don't take the whole word of God. That's the make believers. We find that it's always been. But the nigh, the true, of vindicated word. These are always in each generation. We find them as this is going on. And also very religious. Now, I'm fixing to close right now because it doesn't take them another half hour. Now, Jesus, we find out that he has warned us against these last days and these kind of people. That they be so much like the real thing that they would absolutely would deceive the very elected ones. What is that? That's the Judases. The, the people that go so far up. Look, they, they even can cry, shout, claim to cast out devils, everything. And then turn back around and deny the word. Exactly. They have a form of godliness. That, that, that almost, look at where Judas came. Judas' spirit climbed into the gospel up to the place of Pentecost. But when it come to the time for his baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, and these other things that goes with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he walked out, he showed his colors. And that spirit can live in those denominations till it gets right to that truth. That's right. Then she drops right back. That's right. Like the spirit that's on them, that forerun, right. they're coming. Just as John forerun Jesus coming. Now you say, Jesus said they'd be so close. Now elected, that's the kind that is had their name on the book from the foundation of life that believes, or foundation world, that believes all the word of life. Amen. That's the elected. Now watch these people. I say this with reverence and respect with godly love. If I don't, um, I, I, I need an altar call myself. Notice. Jesus said they would deceive the very elected. Now that wouldn't be Methodist. That wouldn't be Baptist. We know they're unbelievers to begin with. But it's Pentecostals Amen. organization yes. that tuck into that denomination, draw their lines without the word, and draw the line and put their own organization and fenced out the word. They would deceive the very elected so perfectly alike. Say they cry, they shout, they jump up and down. They claim healing services. So did Judas and so did all the rest of them. When they went out, come back rejoicing and everything and even had their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But remember, the bride don't, don't, don't come up in that group. She goes in the rapture. Amen. At the judgment, the judgment was set and the books were open, the wicked. And another book, which is the book of life, it was open. And there was a bride there to judge it. Amen. Another book was open, which is the book of life. That's the sheep on one side and the goats on the other. See, the people who died back out never had the opportunity. They'll be the ones to be separated. But now notice, to see the very elected, watch that group. That's that group that follows right along. Yes, brother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. Yeah. And right yeah. down in your heart, you see what they're working you for. Amen. Amen. Have you in church wide to draw a crowd to bleed them with every bit of money they can get out of it? You think I don't know that? They might not think I know it, but I know it. Mm. Jesus knew it from the beginning who was deceiver. Mm. Mm. But what did he do? He just waited till that time. That's what we must always do. Wait till that time. Don't move in yourself. Wait till that minute. Having a pie farm and go right along. That's that deceiving group. What's that deceiver, that group there? Not the, not the believer, not the unbeliever, but that make-believer. Oh, my. What are they doing? Just weeding along until they think they can find something. Pulling every penny that they can out of the people. See? That pile it up in these great big organizations which are absolutely against and they know it. See, they know it. You don't make anyone watch to say they've always warned their people before you come. Don't listen to it. One man with the audacity to stand there in Ohio. Now, just when Brother Kidd was healed, come out there on the platform and said, Now, Brother Branham is a prophet, no doubt at all, when he's under the anointing. But now I said, when the anointing is off of him, said, Don't you believe he's teaching because it's wrong. And he didn't know it sitting in my room. The Lord revealed it to me. And I walked right down there and many of us there. I said, why would a man say a thing like that? When the word... Now see, I never said I was a prophet. He said it. 
And the prophet, the word prophet, seer, Old Testament. Now, the English version of prophet means a preacher. But the Old Testament seer was a man who had the divine interpretation of the word and was proven by the word coming to him and foreseeing it. Amen. That was what, and a man saying that a man be a prophet and then saying his teaching's wrong. If that ain't a money working scheme, what is? The hour's close at hand when that thing will be pulled out on the scene. Yeah. But that's the kind, that, that make believer. Pat you on the back, call you brother, just a Judas. But remember, he knowed from the beginning. He still knows. Yes, remember, all these listening to this tape, too. That's right. You're in one of them classes. Amen. That's Amen. exactly right. Amen. Now we're going to close. Amen. Every person that's here present, every person that listens to this tape, and even though someday I have to leave this world, these tapes will still live. Amen. That's right. Amen. And you're in one of these classes. Amen. You've got to be in one of them. Amen. Exactly. You can't escape it. You're in one of these classes. That's right. What? Identify yourself with a Bible character that believed where you believed the word when it was a vindicated, like I proved it tonight, that it was a vindicated word always, always contrary to the popular belief. If you should have lived in the days of Noah, now let me say what side would you been on? The church side or Noah's side, the prophet? See? If you'd lived in the days of Moses, would you have believed Moses' message after it had been proven and vindicated by God? But would you went with Kor and Dathan and them and said, you're not the only holy man. Other people can do these things that you do too. See? You'd have to be one. And you are tonight. Or would you have been with Daniel or with the church that was down there at Nebuchadnezzar's party they was given? See? Would you have been outside or would you have been down at the shindig, the, the big thing they were having? Would you have been with Elijah, that man standing on, called an old crank, a man lost his mind, standing up on top of a hill and his head shining up there to the sun with a crooked stick in his hand the birds feeding him? <laughs> Some crank. Or would you have been at the priest and all them down there with Jezebel and the rest of them modern dressed women and Elijah standing up there rebuking him as hard as he could? What part would you tuck your wife to? Just think, just picture yourself tonight. In the days of Jesus, would you have been with this boy that had no credentials? He had no denomination affiliations. They said, what school did you come from? We don't have you on our record here. How do you get this wisdom? How did you ever learn if we didn't teach you these things? What school did you come to? Are you Methodist, Presbyterian, or Baptist? He was none of it. That's right. He was the Word. That's exactly right, brother. The, or would you have tucked aside with the Pharisees of the modern belief of the humble old priest that seemed to be so gentle and nice and the organization that stood up since the Nicaea Council or since Luther organized it? Or what, what group would you have been in? Would you have been the, what group would you have been with? Would you have stood with the Word when you seen it vindicated and proved to you it was a message of the day? Or would you have tucked the church stand? Now just picture yourself tonight. Would you have been there with the apostles when they... Seen Jesus and all these mysterious things when he cried out on them preachers and said, You're a nest of snakes. Them honest old preachers studied that word. Said, You're nothing but a den of thieves and you're, a, you're full of dead man's bones. You're nothing but a whited wall. You generation of vipers. Would you have stood with a hot-headed fellow like that who stood there and rebuked and tore down and said, Which one of you can accuse me of sin if I do not what the Father said? They said, Don't listen. That guy's got an evil spirit on him. He's crazy. He's mad. He's, he's got a spirit of the devil on him. See? Now, the how he does that, he, that's a fortune teller spirit in him. He tells, What is he? His mother had him before her and her husband was married. Yeah. See? What school did he come to? We don't even have one record of ever going to grammar school. And yet... When he was 12 years old, he stounded and confound the priest yeah. with the Word of God. Yeah. What school did he come out of? The school of above. See? Yeah. When you see the Son of Man descending up from where he come from, see? that was his school. But would you have stood with the apostles to a man like that when the showdown come? Or would you actually have walked off with the seven and said, well, we'll go on back to our church. If that's the way you're going to teach, saying to you, the Son of Man, when after all, who are you? What are you, a man like I am? I eat with you. I'm trying to say you're something. 
I've watched you. I've seen your weakness. I've seen you cry. I've seen you do this, that, or the other. And I've seen you go into the wilderness with us and everything else like that. Now, and you're just a man and say, you come down from heaven. That's too much for me. Would you have walked up with him? Or would you have walked out with the 70? Or would you have walked on with the apostles in Christ? When St. Martin tried to hold the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ in the church, when he still tried to hold to signs and wonders and things, and the Catholic Church condemned the man, and wouldn't even recognize him at all and cast him out. Would you have took the place with the Catholic creed or would you have stood with St. Martin? When he refused to put up all these kind of images of, of dead people and worship them, worship them images and so forth. When he refused the dogmas that was added, he said, let the word be truth. Amen. God vindicated him. The great signs and wonders and what he foretold happened. Everything that he did, he walked in the Spirit of God and proved it. And one of, one of them, priests or anything, could do anything about it. Would you have took his sign and went with St. Martin, or would you have went with the Catholic creed? Now, the Word, now the Word of God or the church dogmas is before you. Can you take and accept what the dogmas of the church are, or do you take what the Word says? Remember, in all ages, it has been as it is right now. There's always a popular belief among the people, and it's always been a, just a little bit contrary to the real Word. Yeah. Remember, it's never been just to right out deny it. Oh, no. The Antichrist don't deny the Word. Certainly not. He says he believes it. Right. But just not all of it the way it's wrote here. See? Right. Yeah. See? Satan told Eve. Eve believed it all, but just that little bit that he told her. Yeah, right. They take us all of it, but just a little bit. Might be go to the pool. <laughs> It might be something else. You've got to take it every bit just the way it is here. Amen. Just the way it's said here. It might cause you to do some first works over again, but it's just what the Word said. Amen. This has been Satan's trick since he worked it first on Eve, just to disbelieve a little bit of the Word. And always uh, separates these three classes of people. The Word separates these people. Amen. And every age it's been that way. Every age it ever has been, it's been that way. When God sent something on the scene that clearly identifies it, His Word, then there are those that follow that claim to be believers, and they are. There are those that wouldn't turn back. They believe the Word as long as you stay in Word, they believe it. But when it comes a little contrary, no matter how much God identifies it, for what they believe, they say, well, I don't know about that. That's the unbeliever. Or do you follow along just to see till you can get a chance to say, Aha, here you are, a Judas to stab somebody in the back like he did. I know it would come out sooner or later. There you are. That's the make-believer. Every, every bit of it. We see it in the Bible. A little boy one time down here in Kentucky, raised way up in the mountains. It, he'd never been around where he was a looking glass. He had a little piece tacked up on a tree, but he had never seen himself. He come here to Louisville, it was told, and stay with his mother's sister. And she lived in one of the nice homes, an old-fashioned home, and it went into the, one of the uh, uh, bedrooms that had a, a door that had a mare all up and, all the way up and down the door. See? And when the little fellow started running through the house, he stopped. Little Johnny saw little Johnny. Yeah? And he scratched his head, and little Johnny and the mare scratched his head. He laughed, and little Johnny and the mare laughed. He jumped up and down. Little Johnny jumped up and down in the mirror, see? He walked up real close. He saw his little boy he could play with. So he walked up, directly pecked on the glass. He turned around and his parents was watching him. He said, Mama, that's me! Mm. Now, you look in this, and which is you? Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Which one of these little Johnnies are you impersonating? Which one is you, see? You're one of them. Yes. That's one of them. One that would turn back the first flaw you found. It's you called a flaw. See? Test it with the Word and see if it's right. That's right. If the Word proves all things. That's see, right. Prove all things for the Word. Jesus said do so. Amen. Yes, sir. Hold fast to that. What's good? That's exactly what He said. Now, look in the mirror of God's Word in the other ages and see which group of these three that you would be identified. And now just think, if you lived in the days of Noah, if you lived in the days of Moses, if you lived in the days of Jesus... Or one of them, whatever it is, just think what group you'd be identified with. Think of it tonight. Then, your presence... Now, just think. Now, this is deep now. Don't run over the top of it. Your present state 
right now proves to you what group you'd have been with back there. Now, you're your own judges. Proves what you are. Reverend, minister, what group would you have been with when Jesus made that statement that's hard to believe? What, what, after he had thoroughly been identified that he was the Word. See? And yet that statement, you never heard of anything like that, the Son of Man. What will you say if he be ascends up into heaven where he come from? And you said, well, I know where he was born at. I know his papa. I know his mama. And here he says he's going to send up where he come from. That had been a little too much for you, wouldn't it, sir? <laughs> been just a little bit too much for you. You couldn't have stomached that. Maybe it's the same thing today. Then look in the glass of God's Word and see where you stand. Amen. Oh, deceiver of man. But you never do that. Look, you're one of these classes. In your present state right now, the present state of mind that you hear in this visible audience and you that will be in the invisible audience of this tape, your present state of mind after listening to this tape proves to you what class you're in. It tells you exactly where you are. Whether you are a believer in the Word and will stay with it, whether you walked out or shut that tape off, hmm? that tells what you did. If you don't want to listen to it and shut off, I don't want to listen to that. that that's that. Unbelievable. Right? You won't stop to test it and see if it's truth or not. See? Or just hanging around and trying to find some fault with it. Then you know where you are too. It tells you, God help us to believe it and stand on it and be loyal to it and obey the Word for He is the Word. Hallelujah. You believe that? Amen. Let, Hallelujah. Us, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. how hard it is at times to say these things and know that perhaps tens of thousands of people would hear this or the tape as they go out across the country and around the world. But dear Lord, it is true. It's so true. I pray, Lord, first, clean my heart. Oh, Lord, test me, try me. Just look down upon me, Lord. I'm weak. I, 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 I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm wore out. My throat is husky. My, my, my lips are, 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 are parched like this. And my body's wearing down. I'm getting old. And, and it won't be too many more times, Lord, maybe too many more turns of the sun till, till I, I'll be going. And I, check me now, Father, and if, if there's something that I'm doing wrong and don't know it, you, you just reveal it to me, Lord. You, you show me I, I'm ready now to make it all right. I look at myself over there in a the glass of God's Word. Where do I stand? Do I see my image reflecting Jesus Christ? Is that the person I see in the glass? Do I see one of the believers of the Old Testament or the believers of the New Testament? Do I see a make-believer? Do I see myself as an unbeliever that wouldn't stand and listen to the Word and would take the denominational idea instead? Do I see myself hanging around trying to find a little loophole? Lord, if it's so, just, just clean me, Lord. Let my heart be clean and pure. Because this is my life, Lord. Uh, I, it's, I want it right. There's no need of just halfway doing it if there's a way to make it really done. I, I want it fixed right, Father. Not only that, but I'd be leading man wrong and women wrong. And the people that I love and loves me, then I, I'd be wrong. And Father, if there be anything, if I thought tonight that any denominational church was right, or the counselor churches was right, if the majority of the people were right, Lord God, help me to be man enough and Christian enough to admit my wrong and stand here and send these people to where I think that would be right. Cleanse me. Let me look and see. But when it comes to those things, Lord, as far as I can see it, having those farms and deny the Word. You can tell it to them and yet they say, well, it don't make any difference. And, uh, God don't expect that out. Lord, I believe that You are the same Jesus. You're the same God that You ever was. You're still God and You change not. I believe that this Bible is Your Word. And I believe that You and Your Word are the same. And I pray, God, that You'll give us of Your Holy Spirit to quicken the Word, to give us the quickening power that someday when life is over and You're finished with us, that we'll be quickened and a Send up into heaven where we was in the thoughts of God before the foundation of the world. God grant it. Forgive our sins, Father. If there be men or women here that stands in that other class besides true believers in the Word, 
God cleanse their heart. If there's any listening in to the tape or will listening in, I pray for the cleansing of their hearts, that you'll cleanse them, Lord. I, I don't want to see them lost. God, I pray that you'll, you'll help us to understand that one wrong won't, won't right and another wrong. There's only one way to do it, that's get both wrongs out of the way and get right. And I pray, Father, that you'll grant that to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. With our heads bowed, our hearts bowed, I want you to stop just a few minutes. When I saw the vision of hell as a, as a little boy, the horrors of it, then I may be wrong, and this, that might just been a premonition. It might, I don't know. It seems I was somewhere. It's so natural. And then not long ago when I seen the realms of the blessed, when I was in the realms of the lost, I screamed, Oh, God, don't never let a person come here. You can't, there's no tongue can it describe you what the horrors of it is. There's no way for me to tell you. Uh, if you believe that there is a burning hell full of fire and brimstone, that would be a, a cool, shady green pasture to the side of what the horrors of this lost condition was in and the misery that has, that has associated that place. And if I tried to speak to you of things that would be beyond a human's understanding, I still couldn't describe the place of the blessed. How peaceful, never to die, never to be old, never to be sick, always to be young, always to be healthy, never to die, eternal life, in the blessed of youth, and no sin or nothing else. Oh, there's just no way to describe it. Even the St. Paul, he said, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, or has it even entered the hearts of men. You can't even understand it. There's no way to explain it. What God has for them in store that love him. And now, as this is surely true, both here and the invisible audience. We are pictured here tonight in one of these classes. Either we are genuine believers. Test it with the Word. If the Word said a certain thing and the church said something different, what would you take? Look in the glass of God's Word and see which class you're standing in. And if you're not tonight, both here and in the invisible audience, if you're not, if you're not with that believing type, could I offer just a word of prayer for you now that you would come into that believing time? And would you signify the same by God with your head bowed, your hearts bowed, your eyes closed? And before God, sometimes people are just a little bit uh, afraid, you know, to kind of raise up their hands, afraid their neighbor, which they oughtn't to be that way. But they, they should be willing to stand up and say, Ah, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. He that... He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but he that will confess his sin will have mercy. See? What is sin? Unbelief. Unbelief in what? The Word. Now, if you are not in that class, these things that, that you see in the Bible that you just simply, in, in, your, in, in your, your intellectuals, you, you can't see it. You just, you know the Bible says so, but you just, you can't understand it, and yet you want to. You say, God, let me have the understanding I'll obey you. Would you raise your hand and say, remember me as we pray. God bless you. God bless you. That's good. See, really just think of it. Is there something in the Bible that I, I, just, I just don't know? I, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to find myself in one of the other categories. Maybe I'm going to find myself with the 70. That I, there's just some things that I, it's too hard for me to understand how that, that God would do these things. How He could be, how Jesus could be the same. How, how these things are, I, I don't understand it. I want to understand it. I, I want to believe it. And God help my unbelief. I, I want to be part of it. I want to be a partaker of the Word. I want it in me. If ye abide in me and my Word abides in you, then ask what you will. St. John 15. We know that's true. Look, if ye abide, not in and out, in and out, but if ye abide in me, and he is the Word, and it abides in you, then just ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. You shall have it. He that receiveth my words and believeth on him that sent me has already passed from death to life. But can you receive the word first? Can you receive the word, all the word, all of Christ? Christ is the anointed word. He is the word anointed. Christ means the anointed one, the anointed word. For that day made manifest the Savior, the Redeemer. That's when He was to come and He was that anointed person to take that place. Now, it's the Holy Spirit in the last days. 
to shine forth the evening lights, restoring back the faith that's been trampled down through the denominations, condemning the denominations, and coming back to the original faith with the original Bible faith, the original Bible, believe in every word of it, not adding it and making it say this and say that, just say it the way it's said. And you want to believe it that way. Is there one that never raised her hands, would like to raise her hands and say, God, remember me. God bless you, lady. God bless you, young lady. God bless you. you. Fine. God bless you, little fellow. God bless you, my sister. I want him. God bless you, sister. Over to my right. Bless you in the back. I want him. God bless you, young man. And you, sister, over here. You, brother, over this other side. Lord bless you. God bless you in the back. Just remember me, Lord. Now, remember, you're not holding your hand to me, to him. Right straight in the back of me. I, Lord sees your hand. Even if I miss it, he sees it. He knows your heart. He knows what's pulsating there. He knows your objective. He knows what your motive is to that objective. God bless you, brother. Someone else. I want to believe all the word. God bless you. I, God bless you. Help me, Lord. Help me. The Lord sees your hands. Yes, sir. That's it. There's things that I, I can't understand. I, I don't want to be an unbeliever. Though I don't understand them, I want to believe it anyhow. I'm ready to say, Lord God, here I am. I want to believe. Help my unbelief, Lord. God be with you. God bless you. Many, many hands are up and still going up. You say, Brother Bams, does that help? Put your hand up once with a real right objective and find out how you feel about it. You've testified that there is a little something in your life. You know, there's a little something. You don't want it to be there, but it's there anyhow. You wonder how it could be done. And Lord, forbid that I be a Judas. Forbid that I'd follow along in a, in a message, just maybe trying to think that someday some little flaw will show up. Oh God, not me. Let me stay right with thy word, see. Or maybe I'd be an unbeliever that just simply thinks, well, if, if, well, why don't the rest of them say so, see? I, I don't want to be like that either. I want to be a believer. I want to, I see God's word of the hour. I see God in it. And Lord, make me part of that word. Make me part of it. I want to be part of it. Lord bless you. Now let us pray. And every person, you pray for, for yourself. Now I'm going to pray for you. But you know, one day we're going to, we're not going to be together. Here, maybe for a while, some of us will be taken. And we won't be together. As many of us share, where some of us are getting old, some of us we don't know, even young die. We die at any age. We got to be separated, and this thing's got to be settled. And you just can't get there on haphazardly. You've got to come while you're in your right mind. You say, well, just before I die, if I can sit. No, don't do that. You might not even be in your right mind then. You might be killed before you get home in an accident. You might die in a heart attack. We don't know what's going to happen. Only God holds that. I trust not. I'm watching people on the outside even holding their hands in the window. See? Yes, God bless. I, I, want, I want to be right. I, 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 I want to be right. And now, let's make it right now. Right now, just you can settle it for one time. If from your bottom of your heart, if you'll sincerely Say, Lord Jesus, no matter what it is or what anyone else says, your word will be first in my life. I want it in my life. You are the word. The Bible said so. And I believe that the Bible is the word of God. And I know the creeds and the dogmas that's been injected into it has made it a bunch of hypocrisy. Lord, cleanse me from such stuff as that. And let me be holy thine. I raise my hands to you. I raise my heart to you. My voice to you. My prayer to you. God, be merciful to me. And my hands are up to Lord, cleanse me, O Lord, from all unbelief. Though he may not give me the, the power to walk like Enoch and not have to die, but just take an afternoon's walk and go home with him. But God, I do believe that it will happen because I know there's to be a rapture in the last days and the work's to be cut short. And Father, so says our calendar, 36 more years and the work will be over. And you'll have to come sometime within that or there'll be no flesh saved. And then we're told by the chronologists and the, and the people who search such things that we are absolutely advanced many, many years from that. Many years on up. They tell us by the calendars. 
that we're way up further than that. Maybe there's only 15 or 20 years left. I don't know further. But I know, even according to our calendar, we're almost there. I see where there cannot be any hope left, Lord. There's coming a... If they ever start turning those bombs loose on each other, Lord, there, there, there'll be no battlefront. They'll, they will destroy one another. Lord is hanging there. And yet the Bible says the whole heavens and earth will be on fire. God, I see the hour appearing. I think of the assassination of the president. And then see that other evil man come in without letting the man have a trial and shot him down in cold-blooded murder. Oh, God, one's as guilty as the other. They have no right to do that. Evil. And our own nation is supposed to be a Christian nation. What a poor example we are, Lord, of Christians. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Help us, O oh God, especially your church. Them that's baptized into that mythical body of Christ, which it's a spirit that quickeneth, you said, and as the Son of Man ascended up, so shall his body ascend up, and he is the head. His church is the body. O oh God, it's a head that guides the body. And let the headship of the Word guide the body of Christ. And may I be part of that body, Lord. I pray for these who raise their hands and all is present and all that's be on the tapes. Lord God, I pray sincerely. Take them in, Lord. You look at their hearts. You know what they are. But as your servant, I, I intercede for the people, Lord. I, I love them. I love them. I, I, I'm only trying to do this because I feel your commission is for me to do it. So, Father, here I am doing the best I can. With, forgive my feeble mistakes, Lord. I pray that you will grant to me strength and I'll be able to make it more plainer to the people. Now be with us here in the tabernacle tonight. Look down upon these, Lord, those who raise their hands in the tabernacle. Search me, O Lord, and try me. And if there be any wrong in me, cleanse me, Father. Grant it. Cleanse this church. Clean us all, Lord, that the Word will be made flesh among us and be made known to the world in this day. Grant it, Father. For I commit this with myself and this text and with this audience and with thy word and thy promise for the salvation of our souls in the name of Jesus Christ. Grant it, Lord. May the power of God come upon us and anoint us all the way from the pastor to the janitor and every person that's present. May the Holy Ghost come and take its place into our heart and take every promise of God and reveal to us that thy word is true. Thank you. Through Jesus' name I pray. And while we have our heads bowed, I can just want the organist, if she will, to give us a car on this song. I can hear my Savior calling. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. My Savior called what is it? The Word. I can hear my Savior call me. I can hear my Savior call Now deny your dogmas and things. Take the cross and Ah, he that will not take up his cross and follow me, the word, is not worthy to be my assignment. Back to the Bible, where he'll lead you. Will follow me. the altar to get rid of my shame him through the judgment 
That's it right now. Oh, what side are you on? What do you see in your reflection in the Bible? God's looking glass. If I'm being judged now by the Word, I'll go with, I'll go with the Word, no matter what it costs. I'm going to the judgments of God. If I have to take one of the places, make me a believer, write down the Word with Him. With Him. Oh. Now think it over real close now. 